roughly one in every 70 Americans tested positive for COVID in the last week alone as the Omicron virus surges through this country. Hospitalizations reached a record high with more than 141,000 Americans in hospitals for COVID, the Department of Health and Human Services reported today. Nearly a quarter of the nation's hospitals are simultaneously facing critical staff shortages as healthcare workers are either infected or forced to quarantine due to COVID exposure. In Kansas, paramedics in Johnson County are working 80 hours a week to keep up with the demand and staffing shortages. Ambulances frequently have to change course when hospitals they're headed towards say they're out of beds. The spike in cases is leading to staff shortages and breakdowns of public services across the country. Detroit's bus services announced it is canceling or delaying a chunk of daily services amid a shortage of drivers. The New York City Transit Department also reported some subway lines will be suspended this week as employees call out sick with COVID. In San Francisco, 900 teachers and aides called out sick on Thursday. A number of teachers called for a sick out to protest school, the school district's response to the uh, Omicron surge, but it was unclear whether many were participating, sick themselves, or calling out to take care of sick family members. Schools in Hawaii faced a similar mass staff shortage. And breaking tonight, the Chicago Teachers Union approved a proposal from the city school district that would allow classes to resume in person on Wednesday after a standoff over COVID protocols kept students out of class for four days. The deal still needs approval from the union's 25,000 members. As former Biden health officials warned last week that COVID-19 is here to stay, how do we begin to adapt when the impact of the virus stretches to every aspect of our daily lives? Joining me now to discuss is Dr. Corey Abair. BNC chief medical correspondent. So, Dr. Abraham, the group of former Biden administration officials are for are, are for a new strategy that helps Americans coexist with the virus. How do you feel about this idea that just kind of giving in and saying this virus is here to stay? We need a new strategy that left, helps us to live alongside of it. Well, I think that that's really a good way to handle it, Charles, because at, at this point, as we have always discussed, if we don't look at this globally, because it is a pandemic, if we don't look at it globally, we're going to continue to have these variants. I mean, the places around the world that are not vaccinated are going to continue to produce these variants. We know we have um, an IHU variant, which kind of is a little bit of a misnomer because people keep saying that it's a new variant um, that was found in uh, in France, but actually was uh, isolated uh, in Africa. Um, you know, that, that, that variant actually predated Omicron. So it's a misnomer to say it's new. But the point is that they're going to constantly have these types of things. So we need to kind of get our minds wrapped around the fact that it's going to be here, just like we kind of have influenza until we build up enough herd immunity. But the reason why influenza is a virus that is you know, that's always going to be something that we have to uh, vaccinate every year because it's a very big, complex virus. Coronaviruses are not big. They're not complex. So over time, this is going to go the way of, of, the, of the common cold. But it probably won't be in the next 20 years that it'll go that way. It'll be something that we have to deal with because it is something that is new in the, uh, in the human space. But you know, let's talk about that, that attitude. The Atlantic has an article today reporting that more and more Americans are saying that they are vaxxed and done, meaning, you know, they followed all the initial health guidelines uh, from mm -hmm. last year and gotten vaccinated and boosted. Now they're preparing to treat COVID like the flu and live with it. What, what do you think about that? Right. Well, well the, the reality is that they've done everything that they can do. And the fact that they can sit and speak to the Atlantic means that they didn't die, which is what vaccinations are supposed to do. By and large, people that are uh, vaccinated are not hospitalized. By and large, people that, are vac people that are vaccinated are not dead. And that is the reality. That is the best thing we can get from being vaccinated. So that's not a, a hard approach. The problem is that I still want people to wear masks because 
and still to try to get that, that third dose, because we know that the studies have come out to say that if you've got three mRNA uh, doses in you, then Omicron is probably not going to get you. Delta probably is not going to get you. And, and, and that's, that's a, a real thing. So that means that if you are not an immunocompromised person, if you, uh, you know, do what you're supposed to do, drop that weight, eat right, eat vegetables, quit eating all that processed meat, you know, drink more water, get more sleep, get your immune system together, then you are going to be able to probably make it through this thing. And, and that's what we're, we're striving for. But the reality, though, is that if you don't do all those things, then you can die. And we see people all the time. And you look at the hospitalizations. We talked about this when we said after the, uh, the new year, we're going to see this giant surge. And look what we see. This is something that, you know, it's not hard to predict. But at this point, you have to do what you need to do to protect yourself. Now, I'm in New Orleans. Everybody's preparing for Mardi Gras. I just try to always, you know, put people in the mindset that think of the, of the Omicron vi uh, variant or any of the coronavirus variants as glitter. And you know how hard it is to get glitter off you. Well, I don't know about you, Charles, but some people go to these types of clubs where you know you, you get glitter on you. You know how hard it is to get glitter off of you, right? So the point is, if that virus is on you and it's like glitter, you know you're going to have glitter everywhere. And you got to wash your hands. You got, and you still have glitter everywhere. What, what, and that is a reality. What club are you going to when they spray you with glitter? I, I, okay. I don't. I don't. Well, let's just, I, 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 don't, let's I, just, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just get past that. I mean, I, I do want to get on this. The, the frustration is really real. I, I was in, I traveled to New York uh, sure. last week, and I was a little paranoid because there's so many cases in New York. Uh, and I talked to three people, sure. one of whom said to me, he, he did all the vaccines and the boosters and whatever, and he said, I am literally trying to get it because I'm so tired of running away from it. And I don't feel like I'm going to get sure. sick because I've had these boosters and I just want it to be over. And I just thought it kind of it was like mind blowing. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it didn't make any sense to me. But I do. I understood the exhaustion of 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 it all. How do we put that part of it into our public health planning that people are just tired? Yeah, I mean, p people are. And, and I'm telling you, the road is weary. The road that we have to go on, you become very weary. I get that. But I would, I would make people really step away from that paradigm. Because if you get this, regardless of uh, your, your severity of symptoms, you still can have long COVID. I have a friend of mine who's a, a journalist call me today. He's like, when are my lungs going to be back to normal? I got COVID, you know, and, and I'm okay, but I still have a little bit of difficulty breathing. I said, I cannot tell you that question. That's why I wanted you to not go to that party. So you wouldn't get it, right? But we're having now COVID parties. People are having, like, and you have to show a positive test to get in. Now, I don't know if that's going to be mind-blowing to you, but the reality is that people are thinking about this like chicken pox. I'm so, like, I'm so sick of just avoiding it. If, if I have a positive test, I'm going to go into this party, and then it doesn't matter. And anybody, there's only a certain percentage of people they let in that, that don't have a positive test, so those people can actually get infected, and then they can just get it over with. That is a very, very bad idea, because if you get long COVID, you're going to have decreased uh, uh, brain matter. You're going to have decreased IQ. You're going to have uh, neuropathic pain, which can't be treated, brain fog, um, you know, just just so many things. So you just right. don't want to get this. So I, I, I ask people, please, just I know it's tough, but we're on the downside right. of this thing. Please just try not to get this and get your vaccines then. Dr. Quote. Corey Abair, BNC's chief body <laughs> glitter removal expert. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really Don't appreciate start. your time, sir.